tradition of stone soup. If you don't know the story about stone soup, it's basically an old folk tale about some travelers that came to a city and they noticed that nobody was out talking or having conversations with each other and so they set up a big pot in the middle of town and they started putting stones in it in water and when people started asking them what they were doing they said they were making stone soup so then different people in the community started coming and saying hey I have um, some salt and pepper that might make that better and then somebody else said I have some potatoes that might make that work and then Somebody else said, oh, you know what, I think I have some carrots. And then eventually by the end of the, the day, they had this fantastic soup that everybody had come together and contributed to. So that is the name of our show, is Stone Soup, because what we're going to do is every time we have the show, we're going to have different people on contributing their uh, ideas and opinions about different things that are going on in the world. So welcome to Stone Soup. And our guests today are Curtis Tucker, um, who has Enid Buzz, if you read that, and um, the Sherry Crabtree, and she's a um, she grew up in Enid, and now she lives in Dallas. And so we're going to just have different people on every time and talk about different things. So welcome. Good morning. Thank Good morning. You. Thank you for having us. Yeah, this is pretty good. And, you know, we kind of reintroduced to each other because we both grew up in the same grade school, and so it's kind of cool to reconnect. You have so many sisters and family around That's town. That's true. Everybody says, are you one of the Crabtree sisters? And <laughs> yep, I'm the youngest. So. Yeah, very cool. So um, we're just going to kind of talk about some different things. We kind of we kind of um, touched on some of them. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was about an article that I read recently that kind of I thought it was kind of eye opening and kind of sad at the same time. Um, let's see what you guys think about it. It was basically saying, "Hey, uh, grown ups, your kids don't want your crap." <laughs> so it was basically <laughs> saying that you know if because generation like our generation and generations before us, it was always kind of an important part of I guess your life that you inherited things from your parents or from your grandparents or from your family and things were passed down through the generations and now they're saying that the generations below us don't want all that stuff they don't register for China anymore when they get married they don't buy big bulky furniture they don't want all of our stuff and so they're saying you should probably go ahead and you know sell that off or find a place for it now so you don't saddle your kids with it um, I kind of thought it was kind of sad because I, I have a house full of other people's stuff that I, the, through our families, my family, my husband's family, and I like all that stuff, but, and I'm kind of sentimental about a lot of those kind of things, and um, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I agree. I, the kids aren't wanting, I don't want my mom's stuff, and I know my girls aren't going to want my stuff. I mean, we flat out have asked them already because it is a subject that's coming up a lot more, and I think what has happened is we have the ability to buy more stuff now. You can get online and you can see more options, and I see people changing out their furniture all the time. Well, if you've changed out your furniture three or four times in your own lifetime, you're not going to go back to grandma's furniture. Now, there's always, like you say, a sentimental piece that I think everybody likes to grab a hold of and keep, but yeah, I mean, we're actually going through my mom's house now and slowly, tra you know, not quite telling her what we're doing with it, but getting it out of the house. Yeah, so I like antiques, so I kind of go through my parents' house now and look at things and hope they don't see this. And know, but. Um, you know, and then I'll take what I want or I'll ask for it because I want to keep it now and not wait till, um, you know, they're gone and, and I can appreciate it while it's here. But, yeah, a lot of things change. You know, I'm in a minimalist lifestyle now, so I don't want a bunch of stuff. Um, and things change all the time. It's not it's not going to match my stuff. And, um, you know, everything used to be big and bulky and wooden, and now it's... Um, you know, just the style changes and nobody wants to be yeah. stuck in the past. So, you know, sorry, mom and dad, but, you know, if you get rid of it now, <laughs> it would help us all. Well, I think, too, a lot of it, house, the, the way that they build houses and the looks of houses have <coughs> changed. And so the old furniture just doesn't match the new home styles anymore. And, and so sometimes you just don't have a choice but to sell it at a garage sale or, you know, get rid of it. Yeah, so I kind of wonder what's going to happen to all that, you know, China and you know all those sets of china and all that you know because whenever i mean we got china when we got married and then um when we inherited my in-laws house because they both passed away within a short time of each other and we inherited their house basically we split stuff up with the family and then what was left was still in the house and so then we had to um commingle our household with their household and it was kind of tricky <laughs> because we already had so much of that stuff and so then we were like well you know we'll leave that set of china to this granddaughter and then we'll you know do this and there's so much 
glassware. I mean, yeah. our generations before us had tons and tons and tons. We talked a little bit yesterday about glassware. Like, just entire sets of china and entire sets of tiara or entire sets of, you know, this or whatever. And so there's so much of it. I mean, and there's stuff that we inherited from my husband's grandmother that's still boxed up at her house because I don't have anywhere to put it. Yeah. And so, I, we, you know, I was thinking about it. And my kids are like, I don't, I don't want that and I'm like but it's beautiful and they're like I don't care I don't <laughs> yeah. want it and I'm like what put are we going to do with all this well, that's yeah, what I was so, and that's the thing is though that that was one of the things in the article that I read the other day is that the museums and and I think somebody from one of our local museums even or another person I know that works at a museum commented on it they're like people try to bring some of that stuff to the museum and he goes we don't want it either <laughs> <laughs> and so I mean some of it you know unless it's like it really has historical value of something yeah. you know that's unusual or something but so what's going to happen to all that stuff because well, nobody wants it well we I got guess. China as well we may we may be the last generations that get China yeah. for weddings but so I've been married going on almost 18 years now we've pulled out the China maybe three times yeah. in, in 18 years. That's we've I been mean, married 21, and I think we've used it once or twice. Yeah, and I it mean, was in the beginning when yeah, I was like, yeah. i got to use my china. And now it's just it's wrapped up in a box. Yeah. Well, see, the white way to, the, you know, special occasions to use it. Right. Had china, it's kind I'm of, like, put it out there every day. Use, yeah, you yeah. should every be. Day, it's it's like, kind of dumb, really. <laughs> well, but then you got, you know, we, I mean, we eat on things that you can throw away or wash really quick, you know. True. So going through all that china, you, f you use more energy, more <clears throat> soap, more... You know, so like you said, I love the idea of the minima minimalist life, you know, just let's start throwing stuff away. We collect yeah. too much stuff. Well, I know when we remodeled our house, um, well, when we moved, first of all, we, we downsized quite a bit. We moved into a smaller house. Then when we remodeled our house, we went through so much crap that we just tossed. I mean, it was like, how do we even end up with some of this stuff? Well, we have six people in our house, so, and they were, a lot of them, I mean, little, the kids were younger, so you accumulated just a bunch of stuff yeah. but so then I did pare down a lot when we remodeled and so then it was kind of like okay these are the things we're gonna live with and these are the things we're getting rid of and so I feel like we pared down a lot but I'm kind of noticing I'm like man I could still I've seen this deal where they do the 40 bags thing where yeah. you get rid of 40 bags of stuff throughout or you know the year or whatever <laughs> I don't know how, I, don't, I don't know the whole process but it's like just get rid of the stuff or like if you haven't worn it in a year get rid of it yeah. and so I've kind of been trying to do more of be, I'm trying to be more mindful about it I guess I'm trying to not stash so much stuff and like and my mom she'll be like hey you know do you want this and I'm like I don't have anywhere to put it I'm, I'm getting much better at saying no I don't have any I don't have any space for it I don't and because we since we remodeled our house we don't have a garage anymore so I really literally have nowhere to put anything other than what I want to live with yeah. which kind of brings me to the next subject um, but the tiny houses is kind of a trend now um, like we have a five bedroom house because we had four kids so clearly not a tiny house <laughs> um, you live in the woodlands which is probably not a tiny house no. um, but Sherry tell oh. me about your house so yes I have a tiny house oh, do you really I oh, do oh, I, cool. I moved to Dallas and um, I was downsizing and to back up a little bit on the China so what, when I did downsize I took um, I only drink out of wine glasses now. I drink everything oh, out of wine glasses. Yeah, Water, cool. you know, juice. I love drinking tea out of wine glasses. Exactly. I'm, <clears throat> and I'm like, why not use that china every day? You know, every day is an important day to me. So I'm like, I'm, I got rid of plastic and all this stuff. And I, and now I, I feel like, and it's a very, very tiny kitchen, but everything's, you know, a wine glass and a, a nice, beautiful plate and just the nicest things that I had. I got rid of everything that I didn't that really couldn't live in because I have like one cupboard for food and one cupboard for Now how many square wear. foot house it's is it? It's actually not officially a real tiny house because it's a, like an old farmhouse. So it's a one bedroom farmhouse, but it's 500 square feet. Oh wow, that's so pretty small. So it's so tiny that the bathroom, literally, um, the toilet backs up against the bathtub. So um, it's, it's, you have to sit on it sideways to get into the, to the room. But I mean, it makes sense. You still go shower, you get the, you get everything you want. I mean, the, the sink is probably about this size. I mean, it's tiny, it's little bitty. It's like, but, um, but you know, I realized you don't really need a lot. You've, oh yeah. I've got a bed in my bedroom. That's pretty much it. I've got, I'm um, seating and I tried this for Valentine's Day. I had all my single girlfriends over and we were going to do an outdoor party, but it rained. Um, so here we were literally sitting here there was like seven of us sitting in a circle but what was great about that is it was very intimate and was yeah. forced us to kind of do what we're doing now is have the conversation we couldn't escape to another room and you know I, I basically took things like I said antiques that you know I got from my parents and things that I, I like from um, 
estate sales and I hung them on the wall. So um, whatever doesn't fit in the wall, like I put it outside in um, the carport and I kind of made like a little art studio. But um, so I think it's more, the tiny house thing is more about, for me it was outdoor living, like getting outside more, being outside because if you're inside too long, the walls start to close in on you. Mm -hmm. And if you do have people around, you're probably not going to um, want to be around them too much. So <laughs> you got to get outside and, and, you know, enjoy, you know, nature and just sitting out there. And I, I mean, what's cool about my backyard is, because like I said, it's almost like a little farmhouse. I have tons of birds and I've got cardinals living on my back porch now and two horses that live, you know, um, right next door to me. But, but, um, but yeah, the tiny house thing is, it, you realize you don't need as much stuff as you yeah. have. You just, that's yeah. the minimum. So. Now, I think there's a guy in Enid. I run into him every now and then, and I, I didn't have time to look it up, but he actually builds tiny houses, mm -hmm. um, I think, on the outskirts of Enid. Now, I was going to ask you, I know that they're, they're building a lot of tiny houses in California, mm -hmm. and one of the problems is where do you put well, an official tiny house? Where do you put them? And I guess they're having, some cities are allowing tiny houses to go in the backyards of people with regular size houses. Houses, then they pay them a little bit of rent to have their house back there and it helps the people in the big house mm -hmm. pay their mortgage which I think is pretty cool but there's um, some stipulations where you can't live there 100 percent of the time or you can't have it in the backyard so they use a communal kitchen mm -hmm. which means so the people that live in the tiny house say well I don't live in there 100 percent of the time because I have to go into the other house to use the kitchen and that's how they get around it but mm -hmm. Has Enid even looked at any ordinances no, for tiny um, houses or anything? No, not that I know of. It's not ever been anything that's been brought up. Um, but it, I think it's interesting. And, I mean, the whole thing about not being able to live there so many, I think that's kind of silly because, I mean, if it's your house, it's your house. Yeah. I mean, I think they ought to... I think they ought to work with the people to figure out how to make it work for everybody. Because, really, what is it? I mean... Okay, Ina does have rules about like you can't live in your RV in the driveway or you can't pull up an RV and just live in it somewhere like no longer than like 72 hours or yeah. something which I, I get and like they don't want you know running a cord and you know calling it your man cave in your driveway or whatever um, I, I get that but if it's a if it's a legitimate house and you have you set up a system and you set up, set up rules I don't know why you couldn't I don't know why you couldn't fix your system to be able to do that. Yeah. I think it's. I'm a great not idea. saying that I would approve of doing that, having somebody live in an RV in your driveway. But if it's a legitimate, if it's a legitimate house, and you, and you're setting up a whole community. rule system in a community, yeah. then well, I think, I th I think work neighborhoods are going to start popping up, especially I think it's really in, in better weather states. Now, mm -hmm. my big concern in Oklahoma in tiny houses, especially if you got a little grouper. A neighborhood is that it would what are you gonna right do when a, yeah what are you gonna do when a big storm comes <laughs> well, through? Well, maybe you have one community storm shelter. Everybody well, you're gonna have to, to have a storm shelter. But my thought um, is the houses are gonna be gone. I mean, in Oklahoma, but since they're little, maybe well, they're not gonna be so hard to rebuild. <laughs> White House is actually awesome. It, it's 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 pretty. Um, Yours is connected. It's just yeah, small. <laughs> it is. So so maybe they build them differently. But I think in Austin they're doing they're starting to do tiny house communities for the homeless. Mm -hmm. which now see, I, I think, think that's where it's I think that's for not only the homeless but the elderly that mm -hmm. just they don't need a lot of stuff but they want to live independently I mean I think those tiny houses are great for the older people you know that can still get around yeah. and, um, I've watched the shows on TV about the tiny houses and I've read about them and I'm super fascinated by it but I and I and I ask myself okay could I really do it I mean I'm sure you could not, you, you, can you and I, do, not with like, kids right I mean, now, we, as yeah. a single well, person seen, yes I've seen some of these families though like on the television shows I've seen people that have families not as many I have four kids so that would never work but well, I've seen families with one or two kids that do do it, and I'm like, how in the world? Yeah, because that'd be tough. Plus, that's a lot of togetherness, and I love my kids, but wow, sometimes I just don't want to be in the same room. <laughs> but, it feels um, like going back to college. I feel like I live in a dorm room sometimes. Yes, yeah. I really do. I mean, that's what I and I just wonder. I think I think if it was by me by myself, I could live in a camper somewhere and I wouldn't care. Yeah. But yeah, with a family, man, I think that, or even just one other person, I think that would be rough. I think it would be hard. I don't know. I mean, it would take some really deep. Yeah, that's why you can get outside. And, and, could, that's you know, true. Yeah, yeah, and, that's, and, that's, and <laughs> what I like about the minimalist things. thing is get rid of all your bills. Buy the tiny house. Don't have a mortgage. True. Don't have rent. Have real low. If people would realize how much money 
they could have if they didn't have car payments and mortgages, all the traveling they could do, all the extra things they could do. And even at one point in our lives, we were, you know, we were trying to get there. You know, let's get rid of the mortgage, let's get rid of the car payments, let's get rid of the credit cards, you know, and then kids started popping up and we went the other direction. But um, you know, it was just cool, that thought of, wow, you know, live in this tiny little house. Because you're not going to be there much because you're out on vacations, you're outside, you're outdoors, you're, you're doing stuff. I think it's a cool idea. I think it is too. I think it's interesting to definitely look into. Um, and I didn't really know anybody that had a tiny house. And then, um, I mean, I knew I've known Sherry like my whole life, but I didn't know she was living in a tiny house. Um, she lives in Dallas, and um, so that was interesting. And then I found out earlier that Dane also, um, that our camera guy also lives in a tiny house. Oh, really? In La Homa, a real tiny house, like 145 square feet wow. or something. Oh, wow. So that's even smaller, and I don't think I could do that. <laughs> But I think it's interesting, and I think it's interesting that it's that it's popping up more and more and becoming more of a thing. And and I would hope that if if it starts happening here, I would hope that we could make it something that's easy for people to do. Because I don't, I'm kind of in favor of making things easier, not harder. Yeah, yeah. The ordinances really. and and things like that could get out of hand. I think you but, should. But you've got to keep them clean. You've got to make sure right. they're safe. So there's always two sides to the coin. Absolutely. But, yeah. So um, a completely different subject. Um, another thing that's kind of been in the headlines lately is the new uh, planetary system that they found. And <clears throat> kind of one of the articles that I was reading, um, it's interesting that they found it, first of all, because it's interesting that they're always finding new things in the, in the entire universe. Like I was mentioning earlier, they... Um, find 10,000 new species in the ocean every day, which that is fascinating. To me. That alone is fascinating well, to yeah, me. Because I'm like, how is there that much in the stuff? Jungle and yeah, and, and uh, it's amazing to me because it's like, I feel like we, you know, we're, we're pretty smart folks these days and we have so much technology and so much information and, you know, all these hundreds of thousands of years of knowledge and we still are finding new things every day, which is, is kind of fascinating. But then they find these new planets. And I saw an article pop up a day or two ago that said something like, um, they may be sending two tourists into space next year, like t space uh -huh. tourism. And it was like, would you go? And I'm like, I don't think I would go. I mean, I like to look at it and stuff, but I don't think I would go. What do you guys think? I would go if I had the opportunity, but do I think I would come back? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> do you think it's safe? I mean, well, if, if, if it were everything were to be perfect, I went up there, yeah, I would totally take the chance. To, I mean, can you imagine living anywhere but here? I mean, just... No, I Wrapping think it's your head around that is a no, lot to take I, in. You know, they did the they did the test with the guy that lived in space for a year, had the twin brother, and I, f from the findings that I've read, it's almost going to be impossible for us to ever leave our planet unless we start a population living in a space station that's gravity free. Because the things that they're talking about, the guy that lived up there for a year, the changes in his body. I don't think a human could survive long enough to make it even to Mars. And you know, we're talking these planets that they found are. 24 Far. trillion yeah. miles away. I mean, there's just no way we're ever going to reach them. But I think it, it's very cool that they found them. And what a lot of people I don't think realize is they don't actually see them. They don't know what they look like. So those pictures that you see of the really cool planets are just artist renditions of them. Right. All they see <clears throat> is they see this little light and then they notice every now and then the light gets dimmer. Mm -hmm. And that's how they discover the planets, is because it's one of the planets that's rotating around it, and so they get all of their information by how much it blocks out the, the sunlight, mm -hmm. or and then the gases that come off the planet depend on, can tell them what's on the planet because the colors of the, the light that's coming back. Other than that, they had, I mean, it's really cool, I love it, but they know, you know, they just found, they're just discovering stuff on the moons that go around the planets in our solar right. system that they didn't know. And so yeah. we're, we're a long way off from learning stuff about those planets, but it's cool that they've discovered them. I think it is too, and I know one of the things I was reading, it was saying that the, that the energy that it gives off, that it's not giving off a, a like, um, it's like a tiny, tiny, tiny smidgen of like what our sun gives off. And so most of the energy that's coming from it is infrared light and so it's not like what we can see and so it, I, I don't know how they're studying all that stuff. I mean it's amazing to me it's fascinating to me I mean um, 
And a lot of it, too, is, is what people don't realize is it's calculations. Right. Sometimes they that's don't even they ever see the suns or planets. It's yeah. a computer system that's receiving data, and that data through numbers. Yeah, that's what it was saying. Works, is that they, that that's what they were saying is that's how they were trying to, that it was all done by calculations, figuring out how long it takes to go around its star, and, and all these things, it was all done with math, which is fascinating yeah. to me that they can do that. But, um, yeah, I don't know that I would go somewhere. I mean, I'm kind of adventurous, but I'm also kind of a chicken <laughs> so like well and I tell you why because I've seen movies like Interstellar and that one with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney that was terrifying well, with, yeah. with uh, Matt Damon you yeah got stuck on Mars for a yeah. while I, yeah I think those are terrifying was what was the one was it Gravity was that what it was called the yeah, one with Gravity Sandra Bullock with, and George yeah. oh my god that was terrifying the whole time I was like but having anxiety about the whole because I was just like oh my god that's just that's horrifying I don't want to live like that and so I don't think I could and I was, and when I'm watching that, I'm asking myself, could I do that? Could I do that? And I'm like, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> but if everything went perfectly, can you imagine? If it was guaranteed to be a completely smooth ride, yeah, but that stuff never. Yeah, but you know, I flew with the Thunderbirds less <laughs> right. than a year ago, and and a few months before wow. my ride, the Thunderbird went down in Colorado, oh, wow. and then a Blue Angel went down, right? Uh, like on the same day, <clears throat> and so they actually stopped. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, I've got two kids, you know, thirteen and fourteen year old. Do I want to go up in this Thunderbird plane? Now, thinking of a Thunderbird plane versus the rocket ship that they're going to send up, you know, I think there's a lot less risk in a. Th so I really had no no fear at all going but uh, you know right in the in the jet i i would go i think i would go think if they would? and really all they're going to do is they're going to try to shoot them up there go around the moon come back and land um I don't, know. I don't know if I had the money and the chance. I think I'd because, probably because you know, do it. And I'm, I'm sure you guys remember. I mean, I remember in the seventh grade, we sat there in civics class and watched the space, cha you know, the Challenger yeah. explode. Well, that's just it. So I mean, you know, that you was know. kind of our, one of my earlier um, earlier memories of you know the whole space thing. And, and I mean, it's fascinating, and I know people have done it successfully over and over and over. But you know, there's always that you just never. know. It's just I guess it's just because it's so still kind of unknown. I but, mean, yeah, but, but then not. you think about, it's, too, I mean, I the people, people that die in car wrecks. You know, That's we could true. die in a car accident on the you way could. home leaving the studio. That's so true. People walk across the I mean, street to and get die. To go to space would be more than winning the lottery. People win the lottery every day. This is, I mean, how many people get to go to space? You would be right. one in trillions. I, I mean, just think it, I would give it up for let somebody else that wanted to do it. I would it. go up there and take my camera and at least take a picture of the earth being round so I could come back and say, look, <laughs> it's, <really> round. <laughs> it's round, you know, for the people that are still believing, you know, the sun's round, the moon's round, the planets in our system, you can see the round in a telescope, but people still, there's actually still people that believe the earth is flat. I just don't, I don't comprehend. If everything else is round, how come we wouldn't be round? Yeah, no, no, I don't get that either. <laughs> and then if you go east you eventually come back from the west how is that possible if it's flat I'd, that's true yeah so anyway but know. yeah i'd go up <laughs> if i had the but i they haven't divulged how much those people have paid but oh, it's got to be, gotta be a huge, phenomenal amount. huge amounts of money to go up yeah. it'll be interesting when they announce who they are yeah um some really czar of some oil country i'm sure you know yeah, probably um, okay, so next question. I've seen this this um, question come up quite a bit too, and this is not nearly as um, deep as what we were just talking about. But you know, uh, Easter's coming up. So Peeps, yes or no? I'm a marshmallow guy, so I love Peeps. I mean, I, the the sugar on the back, I'm not a big fan of, but I love marshmallows. So no, yeah, I'm a, no. I'm a peeper. Yeah. I'm, a no. I'm gonna say they look pretty and they're cute, but um, no, they don't taste. Yeah, awesome. same. They don't taste. <laughs> awesome. They taste. Not as good as a, just a plain old marshmallow. Foamy. Yeah, they're kind of, but kinda yeah, I'm a, foamy. yeah. I mean, I think they're funny. And I think the whole, um, I think there's kind of become this whole like culture around like they have all these different kinds of peeps, like yeah. Legos almost. Yeah. Like you have all these different kinds of peeps. So I think that, I think that they're funny and I think that they're cute. It's becoming kind um, of a cult thing. It is. Yeah. They're, yeah. I was going to say there's kind of a whole culture around it, which I think it's kind of funny, but, um, but I don't, I mean, I like to look at them and I think it's cute and I think it's funny, but I don't want to eat them. So speaking of cute, and I think that's how sometimes they get some of their sales. Some, last year, my boss thought we'll give out little packets of peeps. And we put a little um, tag that said we take care of our peeps, mm -hmm. uh, and we handed them out to our customers. 
And most of the women, I say this because there were a lot of women that, um, customers, I'd be like, hey, you have, they'd look at me like, really, you're going to give me peeps? We don't <laughs> eat sugar. I was like, give them to your kids. And like, mm, okay. You know, <laughs> I kind of felt that the kids didn't even like them. Yeah. They were just like, thanks, you know? Yeah. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't, I think, I don't I think know. It's, that's I don't the thing it. about marketing is, is you can sell anything. That's how I feel about the peeps. Put something, a label on it, make it a phenomenon, sure. people will buy it. So. Yeah. Sure. Well, I can just tell you, if there was a box of peeps on my desk, it wouldn't last a week. I'd have them all eaten. I would I not throw them away. I, I like them. I just can't. I just can't. I keep well, what about thinking, candy corn? I mean, I love, see, you're, I love you're either on one corn. side or the other right. side of candy corn. I love you candy hate corn. it or love no, it. No, I, I love, go either I like, way. Actually, I like candy what? corn. I like candy corn. It was one of my favorites when I was a kid, but I still like yeah. it. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of the peeps and the candy corn and stuff is, is just nostalgia. Yeah. I just like it because I liked it as a kid. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, so, something Curtis and I talked about the other day about nostalgia, which I... Um, we were talking about different movies like um, Stand By Me and we're both big Goonies fans and, you know, those kind of movies. Why do you, th I was going to ask you, why do you think that they don't really make as many of those kind of movies anymore as they used to? Like when we were growing kind up, the there were a lot kind of those. Of the, I call them coming of age coming movies. Of age, right. I, I think if they did, they'd be so popular. You know, I had my hopes so set on a movie called Super 8, which came out a couple of years ago. It was going to be about these kids, and but it turned into a big alien thing by the end of it, and so I was really disappointed. But, you know, you just take a movie like Stand By Me. There's no huge budget. There's no guns. There's no car chases. You know, it's just these kids. And I, I think if you did it well, got some... Th those actors were unknown. Right. It wasn't like there was big-name actors in that movie. Yeah. Um, now and Then, a movie that you and I have talked about, and it's kind of the <coughs> girl version of Stand By Me. I don't know why they don't make them. I, th well, I think... Maybe they do, but we don't see it the same. Like, okay, Mean Girls. I mean, you know, these kids are going through a whole different type yeah, of yeah. Um, relationships than we were growing up. They have too many electronics and things, so maybe we just don't understand it. That's why I keep looking at these movies like, it's just not my yeah, generation. Yeah, it I don't could be. I mean, when, when our kids get older, they're going to have their coming-of-age movies. That but what are they? But what are I, they going to be? Know. You know, because I don't... Like, High School Musical? Is that... I mean, like, what... Well, and that? No. <laughs> yeah. Just no. no. I mean, we had great, we had great coming of age movies because, I mean, Goonies was, yeah, it was kind of crazy and far fetched and all that, but it just was. It's about the the camaraderie, I guess, and the adventure because we well, said, because we did stuff like that when we were kids. I was gonna say that. Take yeah, off on we hopped on our bikes and, and we went and, and tried to find and, stuff. Yeah. It was just fun, and so I kind of wonder what our kids' coming-of-age movies will be. Because, yeah, I had big hopes for Super 8, too, and I rounded up my kids, and I made them go. I'm like, we've we got to go watch this movie. I was so excited about it. And I was kind of like, you. I mean, I kind of wanted it to be the Stand By Me Goonies thing. And, then I, and I mean, I still loved the nostalgia part of it. I loved, how, I loved the nostalgia part of it and the friendship part of it. But, the, yeah, I was kind of like, mm, it kind of fell flat. But I, but I still like it, and I still like to watch it again because yeah, of that. Because I like the feel-good feeling from it. Um, but I just I wonder what our the next generation's stand by me will be, you know. Maybe we should got. come up with that one. Ourselves. I know we talked. Well, about we are. I mean, like, I've got, got some buddies, and something. we're we're <laughs> we're kind of getting into the whole video movie thing, and so we're we're actually looking to write a script and and hopefully do a movie. And actually, what's funny, really funny, is uh, we were going to try to tie it into maybe Boggy Creek. You know, these boys go down to Boggy Creek searching. Mm -hmm. That's kind of funny that we brought all that up. But uh, when whenever we do ours, because you and I had talked about. We're going to tie it into Enid and try to create some type of an urban legend from the movie because we've discovered that sometimes the movies create the urban legends rather than the urban legends creating the movies. And so that's, that's what, so we'd like to create something for Enid that, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, people are like, wow, let's go to Enid because that's where, that's where that this so happened, happened or yeah. that <laughs> happened or, you know, so... Um, kind of fun. It's really cool, you know, the, the, the town the Goonies was filmed in. Uh, huge oh, super famous. Attraction. I know, I want to go there. I yeah, want to go see I the mean, house. I mean, and so, you know, we, if we did a really cool movie in Enid, we could, it could become a, tour, you know, people go to Waukita for Twister. Twister. That's true. To see the true. Twister Museum, so. That's true. Kind of but I think cool you're deal. right. I think you're right. I think it's because our experiences are different. You know, we had a different, we grew up, we grew up differently. And I've tried, and I tried because growing up like that, I've tried to encourage my kids to do that. I'm like, man, get out and ride your bike, go find your friends, go have an adventure, you know. And, and so <clears throat> since they don't live as much like that, a lot of times my kids, and this is kind of a heartwarming thing for me as a mom, is now that my kids are all bigger and some of them have had to write stories about like what's one of your favorite things or write essays or whatever for school. And they've all mentioned how much they loved when their mom took them on adventures. Oh, because cool. on weekends, a lot of times we'll just get in the car and just drive 
somewhere random. We don't have a plan. We just go and end up in these weird little towns and eat in different little cheeseburger joints or whatever. And, and so even though my kids aren't living the same kind of, you know, free bicycling kind of stuff we did when we, were, when we were kids, I still try to take them, you know, to do that kind of stuff. But my, my son, now he does, he kind of goes all over the place, but my girls, um, they didn't do it as much. And it's, it's kind of like what you said, there's that whole electronics thing and it's a different age and social yeah. media and all that stuff. Yeah, and I think a lot of it with boys, you know, Boggy, we've been talking a lot about Boggy Creek. Uh, <coughs> you know, that's where the tadpoles were. And so that's right. where we hung out, you know, and the, and the Boggy Creek went into the drainage ditch that went into the tunnels that went all over town. And if you want to go underground all over Enid, you went into the tunnels and so. Well, I think there, it's about time for us to wrap up, but I think this has been kind of a fun conversation. We yeah. talked about all kinds of random stuff. Yes, we did. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> random stuff. But I learned about Boggy Creek. I've heard about it, so it's starting a legend. Because yeah, you know, I don't, is there, are there any signs? I don't even know that there are, like, a sign that says uh, Boggy Creek. I, there used to be, but I don't know if there still I'll is or not. To, yeah. I mean, oh, probably we don't want the kids going down there. We're going to have to go, <laughs> have to go look. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, thanks you guys for doing Stone Soup with me today. Um, it was a lot of fun. And uh, well, we'll be back next time with a new group of people and a new group of stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm.